Hello and welcome. Dragon's Dogma is an open world fantasy action RPG that came out a few months after Skyrim, which is why it was probably ignored by most people when it first released. However, over the years Dragon's Dogma has obtained a massive cult following, claiming that this game is not only a great game, but that it is one of the most underrated games of all time. So with Dragon's Dogma 2 just around the corner, I thought I would jump back into Dragon's Dogma and play through it again with the goal of answering a simple question. Should you play Dragon's Dogma in the year 2024? I can only describe the story of Dragon's Dogma as being batshit crazy. It starts off alright, there is a dragon that steals your heart. But like in a literal sense, like he actually steals your heart by ripping it out of your chest. And then it turns out that you are something called the Arisen. Now why is there a big fuck of dragon in the first place? What is an Arisen? Who am I? What am I? All questions with no real answer, but then you start off on your adventure with your goal in mind to get back your heart from the flaming dragon. Along your journey you will meet a bunch of characters that are in some way connected to a larger scheme orchestrated by this flaming dragon, and then you will reach the end and all of your questions will be answered. Or will they? Now the first time I completed this game I was left with one question. That question being, what the hell did I just witness? Yeah, the story of this game and its twist is absolutely absurd and convoluted. All of the major events that happen in this game are not fully explained and leave me with more questions than answers. Essentially the story seems to work just as long as you don't look too deep into anything. And yeah, I have seen a lot of people saying that the side missions add a lot to the lore, but I don't believe it explains everything. Now when it comes to continuing the story I was kind of confused because this game is getting a sequel, but apparently the sequel takes place in a parallel universe, so I guess that's how the writers found a workaround. And I genuinely hope that the story makes more sense in the up and coming sequel than it does in this game. I have to say that the story overall has potential to be great, but it's seemingly convoluted for no real reason and is probably the most flawed element of this game. <laughs> Now most quests and side quests in this game are very basic. This game is not like The Witcher 3 where it has a bunch of branching quests. Most of the quests boil down to traveling somewhere and either defeating something or defeating something and then collecting something. For the most part these quests are fine and made even better due to the combat which I will get into later. However this game does have some terrible quests, mainly the escorting quests. Early on you will get the quest to escort Mercedes and the head of a Hydra to Grand Soran. Now this quest is not only too long but the NPCs walk too slow and will just stop if you stray too far from them, making this quest and similar quests in this game very tedious. And with that said, there are a lot of quests in this game that require a bit of backtracking. You will travel past some trails you have already been to quite a few times and it can get very annoying. Now this game is an open world game. The world is not that big but it feels very big. This is due to the world being a connection of linear spaces that connects to wider more open areas. And given that this game is lacking in the fast traveling department, you will constantly travel through a lot of these areas over and over again. Like I mentioned, 
quite a bit of backtracking. But luckily enemies do respawn which means that you will come across something to do when traveling through these areas again and again. And different enemies will appear in certain areas during the night time which is pretty cool. Now the fast travel system is kind of complicated. You will come across these crash bandicoot crystals that you can then place anywhere in the world and create a fast travel point there. However there are very little of these crystals that you can find and in order to place these crystals at the most optimal places possible you will have needed to at least play through this game already. I think it is a cool concept and I don't think the fast travel system in Skyrim would have worked in this game because this game kind of wants you to run around a lot and Skyrim's fast travel system would make the map feel way smaller. But I think there should have been more of these Crash Bandicoot crystals available for the player to find. There is also a bunch of cool things to find in this world as this game encourages exploration. You can find a bunch of items or upgrade materials or a very cool epic boss battle in the middle of nowhere that will give you a bunch of cool items or upgrade materials. Exploration always feels rewarding in this game and even though it could get slightly tedious due to the lack of fast traveling and also due to your annoying stamina bar that drains extremely fast and regenerates extremely slow. The overall exploration experience is still very fun. Then there are the quests that will lead you to more linear levels, like basically every open world game ever made. These levels are pretty well done. They have branching paths with things to discover within these branching paths. The levels are full of enemies making it fun to travel through them instead of just being empty always you have to run through and some of the designs of these levels are very unique and pretty cool. Overall I think this game's quests and levels are decent and could have been way worse but they do what they have to do and they are pretty fun most of the time. This game takes place in a medieval fantasy setting. The environments are pretty beautiful. This game does not have very diverse biomes, but it doesn't make the environments more bland due to the lack of these more diverse biomes. Visually the game looks pretty good, it's not the best looking game from 2012, but it looks good. This game however at night is pretty terrible to explore if you do not have some sort of light source, as this game is pretty dark at night, like you cannot see anything at all. However this game being very dark at night is something that is almost certainly very deliberate from the developers so it is not really a complaint. However there is one thing about this visuals that stand out to me and that is that this game looks a little dull almost like it has a filter over it that makes the colors look more flat. I think the game could look a bit better with more vibrant colors but that's the only real complaint about this game's visuals that I have. The gameplay is where this game shines. This game has a combat system that feels pretty deep. First off is the variety of vocations and the abilities to create a hybrid vocation that all requires unique equipment and is great in terms of replay value. The combat feels different with each vocation and is very satisfying. There are also a bunch of unique abilities special to each vocation and almost all of these abilities are super cool to use. This game also has a bunch of weapons of which some of them have very cool designs. 
Now the player also has a bunch of other abilities that's not necessarily connected to their vocations, like the abilities to climb big enemies to more easily get to their weak spots, as well as pick up smaller enemies and yeet them off of cliffs. All of these things combined create a super cool combat system of which I am surprised not many other games take inspiration from. But the combat itself is not the only good thing as this game has a wide variety of enemies with unique movesets and attack patterns as well. Some of the enemies can also adapt to certain moves like the player climbing onto them. The bosses especially are really cool in this game as you can spend quite a long time taking them down and it is almost always worth it. Some of the enemies however are simple reskins that has more health but has the same movesets and they kind of suck. But Overall, the enemy variety is not something to complain about. You also have pawns, which is a kind of unique system that this game has. Essentially, you have a main pawn, which is essentially your sidekick, that will level up with you and you can customize their vocations and their armor as well. Then you have the pawns that you can summon through the rift. These pawns are temporary as they do not level up with you and you will have to swap them them out consistently. It's a cool system that I really like. The pawns themselves seem to have decent AI as well that actually work well, but there are also times where they seem to be on the slower side and sometimes don't seem to shut up, but overall they are pretty well designed companions that actually function properly. So overall I really like the combat of this game, it is very satisfying and fun. Even even though the missions can get repetitive and you will fight a lot of the same enemies over and over again, the combat manages to make every encounter feel fresh and fun. Now there is one additional thing I would like to mention about this game and that is the character creation. Now this game's character creation might be one of the best out there and I am purely talking about the appearance customization. You can adjust height and weight, every option has additional sliders to adjust it more to your liking. There are a lot of options in each department to choose from and overall you can create a pretty cool character. Now with character creators becoming more and more basic every year, I'm hoping that Dragon's Dogma 2 actually takes this character creation and improves on it in every way possible, which if they pull it off would be something special. This is a game that is a lot of fun and it is a game I really love but it is a very flawed game in many ways. It is because of these flaws that my first playthrough of this game was not a very pleasant one. I actually hated this game the first time I played it and once I gave it another try I actually liked it and yes I am certain that there are some people out there that might play this game and absolutely hate it. But I am still willing to say that despite its many flaws this game is very fun and absolutely worth experiencing especially if you love fantasy open world action RPGs. So I am hoping that Dragon's Dogma 2 improves on all of the flaws Dragon's Dogma has, but there is still a short while to go before that game comes out. Perhaps leaving time for you to play through Dragon's Dogma. But to answer the question I asked in the beginning of this video, should you play Dragon's Dogma in 2024? The answer to that question is going to be a yes from me. However, you should consider some of the flaws that this game has, like the inventory management, the stamina management, an absolutely ridiculous story, and a bunch of backtracking that can all be a little bit frustrating. So that is it for this video. I thank you very, very much for watching. Bye bye.